everyone, it's Melanie and welcome back to my channel. I've got a little bit different setup today. Today I'm going to be talking with you guys about entry level sewing machines. I get this question all the time. Like I, I just had to make a video because I get this question so often. What is a good entry level sewing machine? What do I recommend? And so I'm going to go through based on what type of sewing you like to do. I'm going to go through the different features. I'll show you the features on my machine so that you get a visual so that when you do your shopping, you can make a good educated decision. Also, when I say entry level sewing machine, I picked sewing machines that were under $200 or right around the $200 mark. When I bought my Viking, this is my Viking right here that I first started sewing on. This was about a $350 machine. So um, this is actually not one of my recommendations. I will have the details down below, but I really wanted something that would be, most of you say, under $200 is what you're looking for when you're asking me these questions. So that's kind of what I was looking for. Now my Juki, I have have my Juki out here just so that you can see some of the comparisons. This is definitely not an entry level sewing machine. This is a thousand dollar sewing machine. I saved up for about two years before I was able to purchase it. So, and it, it served a very specific purpose um, for what I needed. So this is not really your entry level sewing machine. I need to still have my Viking because the Juki doesn't have a zigzag. Um, it doesn't have a great free arm space. There's a couple of things that it's limited because it's meant for something different. So um, I'm gonna go over some of those features. I will have all of my recommendations listed down below. So forgive me, I have my notes here. Um, and over on my Facebook page, if you guys are on Facebook, you can go find me. You can look me up, Melanie Ham. I'm on there. I gave my Facebook page a little survey a few weeks ago and I asked them what kind of sewing machine they have, whether they liked it, didn't like it, what features they wish that it had, and the things that, you know, some of their thoughts about it. So actually, Ashley, my best friend who works with me, she helps me out a little bit. She made a spreadsheet on all of those answers and all of those sewing machines. So I will make that available to you guys so that if you are looking at any of these sewing machines, you can look and see what someone had to say about it. The majority of the people that commented, I had over like 80, 100 comments underneath this survey. Most people had a brother, a few Janomis, Singers, and Berninas, and a couple of other ones sprinkled in there. So really quickly, I want to go over some of the features that you'll be looking for for the different types of sewing that you are doing. I'm not going to go over like the details of the different machines that I picked as my recommendations. A lot of them have very similar features, and because each of you are going to be have are going to have a slightly different um, you know purpose and and thing that you're working on, you can just see those below and you can compare the prices and you can kind of compare the features. It'll be a more condensed list, so you won't be hopefully overwhelmed when you're shopping online. So if you are a clothing sewer, if you think that you might wanna sew clothing, even just a little bit, there's a few things that you really need to have for your sewing machine. The biggest things you need to have if you were gonna be sewing clothes is a zigzag stitch, some other stitch options like a stretch stitch when you're sewing with knits and things that have some stretch in them. Also a smaller free arm. So here's one thing that I think is interesting to know. This is the free arm on my Juki. I will show you some close-ups, don't worry. Um, this is not a small free arm. Getting a sleeve around this thing would be really difficult. It, it would be bunched up here by the foot. Over here on my Viking, you can see how much smaller the free arm is. You can really get a sleeve around there, pant legs, baby clothes, things like that. And so that's really something that you're gonna wanna make sure it has for an entry level sewing machine if you're gonna be sewing clothes. The other thing that is gonna be really essential for sewing clothes is a variety of feet. A lot of these sewing machines do come with a selection of like five or 10 feet to put on your sewing machine. Things like doing ruffles, rolled hem foot. Um, a free motion quilting does the darning foot, but there's lots of different types of feet that will be really helpful when you're sewing clothing. A wider foot for a zigzag stitch, things like that. So that's gonna be really helpful so that then you don't have to go out and purchase those feet individually uh, later on. The other thing that I really recommend for an entry level sewing machine for clothing sewers is a buttonhole feature. Um, a way to do your buttonholes really, really easily. That's a lot of what the um, sewing machines will say. You know, one button or one button buttonhole, you know, just a one click kind of thing. And so that is something that you're going to want to look for because buttonholes can be a pain in the butt. And if you have to do them, you know, traditionally where you just make your own button, which I have done. Um, 
it can be just a little bit more time consuming. And so if you're going to be doing that a lot, really good feature here. This is the icon for the buttonhole foot. It's basically like a really dense back and forth zigzag stitch. So make sure that um, your machine has a really easy way of doing that. Okay, so now if you are a quilter and you're gonna be using this machine mostly for quilting, a couple of things, you wanna be able to have an extension table. My Juki has a large extension table and I love it. And some of the machines that I'm recommending down below do have that. The Viking does not. This is as big as it gets, and unless you have a sewing machine where you can dip it down into the table to have a flat surface, um, that's something that's really helpful when you're quilting. Also, a needle up, needle down button. Only a few of the machines have that feature. That's a more rare feature. That's really helpful if you're going to be doing free motion quilting, which leads me to the other thing, which is you really need to have the ability to drop your feed dogs um, to be able to do your free motion quilting. A lot of the sewing machines that say it's a quilting sewing machine will also come with some of those feet like the darning foot, a walking foot, and some of those things that will be really easy for quilting. The other thing is if you're going to be using this for quilting is as large of a throat space as you can get. With the entry level sewing machines, they're going to be small. That's why it's one of the reasons why I purchased this Juki. Um, the, the sewing machines with the larger throat space are more expensive. There's really not any that you can find for a lower price point unless you find a vintage machine, which is also a great option. I sewed on a vintage Singer for several years because I couldn't afford the Juki. So I specifically purchased a vintage machine with a large throat space so that I could do my own quilting on my quilt. So that's also an option. That is just gonna be a whole nother video. The other thing for a quilting, if you're gonna be doing mostly quilting, is a good needle plate. Something where you can really see where that quarter of an inch is or a foot that's a quarter inch foot because the quarter inch seam allowance is so essential for quilting. That's a really good thing to have in your machine. Okay, now if you're gonna be doing craft sewing, like home decor type of items, or you know, you're just not really gonna be doing uh, quilts necessarily, maybe blankets, baby blankets, baby items, um, home decor, things like that. The, I, I really recommend that you have a machine that can handle some heavy duty fabrics. Because if you're gonna be doing like draperies or upholstery fabrics, anything like that with like home sewing or craft sewing, anything with outdoor weight fabric, you want a machine that can really handle that. So I did choose a Singer down below that's uh, considered a heavy duty machine. Um, I think that would be a good choice if you're gonna be doing stuff with really thick fabrics. A really good solid vintage machine would be good for that also or a semi industrial but in terms of that under $200 price that's kind of a good option if you know you're gonna be sewing with real thick heavy fabrics then you want to kind of allow for that craft sewing you also kind of want to make sure you have some of the different features maybe specialty stitches a variety of feet and uh, things like that so uh, really though if you're a craft sewer going with more of like the clothing entry-level route is a good option and even as a quilter I quilt I'm a quilter and um, I don't really sew a lot of clothes. It's not kind of my thing. Um, so I still use my Juki almost for every project. I rarely use my Viking unless I need my zigzag stitch for something because this is a straight stitch only machine. So it really, really is gonna depend on how you are going to use it. I will say this though about the entry level sewing machines. I put down there the Brother CS6000i. That's like the one you always see at Costco. It's a great price, like $140 with and it's like jam packed with features. And a lot of people um, said that they liked it on my survey. To be honest with you, I personally am a little skittish about purchasing a lower price point sewing machine with a computer in it. Because if the computer fails, your, your sewing machine is useless. You can't just like take it in and have a part fixed. Obviously you could have the computer fixed, but at that pr price point, it's maybe not um, as cost effective to do that. So for me personally, I shy away from computerized sewing machines that are at a lower price point. I'm just gonna share that out there. A lot of people have had really good success with it and that's why I'm recommending it because you guys have told me that you think it's a great entry level sewing machine and it has like so many features. It's crazy how many features it has. But I also wanted to make sure that I recommended some um, basic sewing machines, no computers, the traditional knobs, things are metal parts, really solid, sturdy sewing machines. The Janome that I'm recommending is kind of like that. Very simple, straightforward, no buttons, 
no, you don't, you know, you still have to have power obviously to work it, but it's a little bit more, I think, user friendly, uh, very simple if you are like just learning how to sew. Um, and kind of all the bells and whistles are a little bit overwhelming. So I wanted to have a couple of different options in there. If you guys have sewing machines, I want this to be a good resource for people looking for sewing machines. So if you uh, think I left something out or you have something to add, please leave comments below so that if you are looking for a sewing machine, you guys can talk to each other in the comments and maybe share what sewing machines you have what you like about them, what you don't like about them, and that this is just a really great resource. The other thing to keep in mind is I I looked around online and I all of the ones underneath the video are from Amazon. That was by far the best prices that I could find. Um, but if you want to go to the, so, the store, um, I know Joann's has a bunch of their singers on sale almost all the time and <laughs> there's always sales on things like that. So it might be a good idea too to sort of look at them in person, compare the prices, see it, you know, in the flesh rather than online, it kind of gives you a better idea of what you, th what you think might work best for you. So real quick, I will mention the sewing machines that I am recommending down below. The Janome 2212, it's a $147 machine. The Singer 4411, the Heavy Duty, that's the Heavy Duty one. It gets great ratings on Amazon. That one's $130. The Singer 7258 has a lot of features. That one's $170. Uh, the Brother CS6000i, 137, that's the entry level sewing machine I was talking about before that has the computer. Um, also, the Laura Ashley Singer Confidence Quilter was really the only sewing machine that I could find geared toward quilting that was at the lower price point, but that is just over $200, so it's not quite under the $200 range, but it does have some good quilting features. Two of the things that people commented a lot on features they wish their sewing machine had on my Facebook page was better lighting. And so I wouldn't worry so much about that when you are buying your sewing machine because you can get these LED strips or have some additional lighting that you can purchase. There's lots of different options for that that you can kind of add on to it. A lot of times when you're shopping online, obviously you're not gonna be able to see it plugged in. Um, my Juki has a decent light, but with this throat space underneath here, I think adding an LED strip would be great. I do have one of those alt lights that I can bring in and have additional light. That is something that's an issue for you. So that's one thing that people were really um, saying that they wished their sewing machine had better. Also, the other thing that I wanted to just throw out there is a thread cutter, an automatic thread cutter. I absolutely love that feature on my Juki. My Viking does not have it. And really the entry level sewing machines most of them don't have it. It's a really hard feature to find in those lower price points. I believe, I'll double check, I believe that the um, brother does have that. So a lot of people are saying they missed that feature, but in the lower price points, it's gonna be really difficult to find it. So don't rack your brain trying to find it because it's probably not gonna be there until you get up into the higher price point sewing machines. If you want to have a machine that does embroidery, I am not your girl. I don't know really anything about uh, sewing machines that offer an embroidery feature. So if you know anything about that, leave comments below. I get questions about that. I'm a hand embroidery person. I don't really um, have any machine, have never used a machine that does it by machine. So if you have one of those, please leave comments below so that people can ask you about that. And please leave comments, interact with each other. I really want this video to be very helpful helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try my best to get back to you and I will have all of the links in the description box um, for all the things that I'm saying to you. I'll have my handy little spreadsheet that Ashley made. I will have that available. I'll have all of the things listed out, um, kind of the different features that I've talked about. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with any of your sewing friends or anyone you think is looking for a sewing machine. This might help them out. And uh, if you like this video or you have any other video requests on this these types of videos, please leave me a comment on that down below as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.